In this video, we'll take a quick look at using an app on a PC for syslog function. In this case, I'm going to use TFTP D64. It's, um, you'll see quite an easy application to use. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to settings and I'm going to disable anything I don't need to use since I'm only using syslog function. I'm going to disable the TFTP server client and also DHCP. And then we're going to go to the syslog tab. I'm going to enable forward message to pipe TFTP D32 syslog. I also want to enable the save syslog messages. By default, it's going to give us here a syslog.txt name. I do want to give it actually a path to my hard drive. In this case, I'm going to use my C drive. I created a folder I just called the syslog. I'm going to go ahead and copy the path where my folder is at. I'm going to paste it in front of the file name. I'm going to put a backslash. So basically what's going to happen is when the device sends syslog messages to this application, the application is going to write a text file syslog.txt within the syslog folder on my C drive. The benefit of using syslog is you can record many days, weeks, and months of logging information such as debug information. If you're troubleshooting something that is random and or sparse in nature and is normally very difficult to capture logging information. So this gives you a lot of breathing room to allow this to run over longer periods of time. I'm going to hit OK. It mentions that we need to restart the TFTPD application. I have found when using these settings that normally I do not have to restart the application for it to function. However, if you do run into issues, feel free to restart. In this case, I will not. Okay, next thing we want to do is we want to identify the IP address that the computer is using, 192.168.1.33. I'm going to go to the device we're going to configure to send syslog information to the syslog server, the application, if you will. I'm using a telephony adapter ATA by Cisco. It's a 3PCC. I went under administration, log, debug log settings, and I'm going to type in the IP address of the PC. I'm going to leave the default port number for syslog, which is UDP port 514. I am not using IPv6. I'm not going to touch anything else. So I'm going to submit this. This will take a few moments for it to ingest this information. One item to note is if your device is deployed, you know, with a cloud type of scenario, such as, for example, if this was deployed with WebEx calling or another service, it is very likely you don't have admin rights. So if you do need to do a syslog type of configuration as what I'm illustrating here, you would want to work with the respective tech support department from that service provider in the effort they can assist with getting the syslog settings configured on the respective device. Okay, so we can notice uh, it looks like there's been already some activity from the device as far as syslog. I'm just going to increase it here just so it's a little bit more visible. And what we should also be seeing is we should be seeing this being written to the hard drive, which it is. If you notice, there's a syslog file. Uh, please be aware, I've noticed that the actual size of the file within Windows File Manager or Explorer, if you will, does have quite a bit of delay times getting updated, like it's empty. But if we actually open up this file, you'll notice there's actually quite a bit of information already here. And then, for example, um, if we needed to do some testing, I'm going to show you a quick example here. Let me just adjust this a little bit more. So, for example, um, let me go ahead and 
launch a soft phone okay and then what I will do here is let me go ahead and call up a phone testing 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 one two three testing testing and you can notice that there's output being collected here so uh, just in review this is TFTP D64 and the only settings I really have to do is I went to global I am just using the syslog function so I disabled all the other functions I went to the syslog tab I enabled the forward message to pipe TFTP D32 syslog I enabled the save syslog messages and then I gave it a folder that I created on my C drive so C colon backslash syslog backslash and then the file name is syslog.txt you can use anything you want for the file name phone switch access point IP camera print server or printer etc etc depending what you're troubleshooting and then basically um, from a PC standpoint um, if your PC is running Defender firewall or third-party firewall that could interfere so you may need to look and making some adjustments from that standpoint if you're seeing no information being sent to the syslog server in this case the syslog application from the phone but hopefully this gives you an option if you're running into a situation where you need to log debug level logs and the issue is maybe very sparse and or random and the amount of logging that can be done locally on the device most devices do have limited amount of storage so in this case we have a phone device telephony device if you will it can be an IP camera it can be an access point it can be also a switch depending on a switch class can vary as far as how much storage but in any case the syslog application gives you a very convenient way to be able to record longer term logs to a PC and then be able to go back in time if you need to take a look if there's any type of events that have occurred you would still want to document the date and time of the event that had occurred and any any other information um, if there's a specific pattern of key presses if we're troubleshooting a phone or if there's any other types of events if we're troubleshooting some other device but hopefully this helps you with how to set up a basic syslog application on a PC and the basic settings you would use on a device in this example is a telephony device on setting up syslog thank you for watching this video